Hi, uh, I'm here to moderate a panel for a film that's going to be premiering tomorrow at the Tribeca Film Festival. The film's called Dixieland, and it's awesome. I got to catch it a couple days ago. So please welcome the writer and director of the film, Hank Bedford. And we also have the star of the film, uh, Chris Zalka. And last but not least, another actor in the film, RJ Mike. No one ever says his name right. Yeah. Did I say it wrong? No, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Mitty. It's Mitty. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so He's sorry. <laughs> I'm a huge Breaking Bad fan, so no now worries. I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> um, love this film. Thanks. What's going through your mind? Uh, Hank, uh, if you guys are unfamiliar, he's a first-time feature filmmaker, yes. and you have a world premiere in competition at the Tribeca Film Festival, yes. no small feat. I know. Premieres tomorrow night. You nervous? You excited? What's going through your I mind? I am a little nervous. We've never shown it to this many people. We've, the most people that have seen it at one time is 25. So 25 have, people. Yeah, so we wow. have a 500-person theater tomorrow night. So yeah, I'm a little nervous, but excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And Chris, my God, I, I've never seen you like this in a film before. Yeah. You know, I've been following your career since Kaboom, <laughs> one of my favorite Gregor Rocky movies in yeah. which you, you, you exposed a lot of uh, flesh. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and uh, in this, my God, it's like a total 180. Yeah. You're just, you're fantastic. Uh, Can you, thank you tell people about who you play in the film? And the um, well, his, his name's Kermit. And... Um, Gosh, me and Hank had so many conversations about him. He's everything. He's everything and always in the moment. Um, and and I, think, I think when people walk away from the film, what they'll see or what they'll take from it is uh, bad choices, good choices. You know right from wrong. Yeah. And there's a lot of right and there's a lot of wrong. Um, He's an earnest, loving, loving person. Mm -hmm. Well then Hank, why don't we get, since there's obviously no trailer cut because the film has yet to get a distributor. Right. Um, for people who haven't seen, well nobody's seen the movie. Can you just describe what it's about? Yeah, sure. Chris's character, uh, Kermit, gets out of jail and moves back home in a trailer park and, and he uh, falls in love with a beautiful girl next door. Riley Keough. Riley Keough, yeah. who unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, but so he falls in love with her and she's in trouble. And over the next couple of days, he makes, you know, he has to make a decision on whether or not he wants to help her out. And that's the, that's the brief. That's the gist of that's it. That's the gist of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also like in the narrative, you interweave a lot of documentary footage. Yes. He interviewed a lot of people from Dixieland in Mississippi and interweave their stories into the narrative of this this fabric. Yeah. What was behind that? Did this start out as a documentary and you chose to make it into a narrative? Or no, how no. did that all work out? No, it just Ran honestly. Into someone on the first yeah. Stage. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just seemed really obvious when we would run into these people that they were so fascinating. The, the idea was always kind of something that was in the back of my mind. I'm pretty open to making a movie a different way than maybe is, is normal. So. So yeah, whenever we met these people, I thought we'd, we'd have extra time at the end of the day and we'd, we'd just start shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Did you rely on any of their stories to inform, you know, the storytelling behind this? Or did you have the script totally lined up before you Yeah, the script was totally people? lined up, but they, they really seemed like they just fell right into the world. And they really, I think, helped create the world. Okay. You know? I really think that they, like, inform you as a viewer as to what's going on in the movie. Yeah. yeah. They must have informed you two as actors, I'm guessing. It was, real, uh, to me, it, it was like the perfect amount of exposition. There's not a whole lot of exposition in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they do, they inform the audience, like, this is life in this area. And it's rough, but it's, it's life, so. Yeah, and RJ, what about you? How invested do you get with with the environment, with the people there. I, I think what's the best thing about any film is when you're shooting on location. The, the location succumbs you and, and it helps um, create that character and bring it to life even more. You know, I, I didn't have the pleasure to be a part of the full, the full shooting. Yeah. I, um, I came on the tail end. I, don't, I only had the pleasure to work three days on the set actually. <laughs> yeah. But what I saw and what I was able to be a part of was so much fun and, and the life that the set had and, and everyone that was a part of it. And we shot in this, uh, this very lovely establishment 
uh, for a couple of days. <laughs> a strip club. Babes. Yeah, a strip club. Babes. Um, very yeah. lovely. Uh, <laughs> clean. No. Um, but, <laughs> but really, it was... It, it helps. I love being a part of a set. I love being a part of a crew. When I was able to come be a part of this, I, I was extremely happy to see how amazing everyone was. And, and Chris was such a pleasure because, you know, when, when, you're, when you're coming in at the tail end of a movie and, and you're like, oh, my God, I hope they like me. <laughs> um, it, it just it was a blast. And the, the characters were spot on, especially for the environment that they have there. And what we're able to show, the, the, the grittiness and the truth of, of so much um, and, and the realism that, that everyone brought that I saw, that it, was, it was really a remarkable thing to see. Yeah. So. Well, Hank, I'm just curious, because we spoke backstage, and you're from Nashville. You're not from Dixieland, Mississippi. Mississippi. What about this, this town fascinated you so much to want to, you know, really make the story about the people there? To be honest, you know, it was always just that I wanted to make it in the South, and I really wanted to make it in Tennessee. I wanted to make it in Tennessee, and the, the tax incentive program just wasn't going to work out. And a guy named Ward Emling, who's actually here, I just spotted him. Ward. Yeah. <laughs> He recruited us to Mississippi, and he, he like offered the most amazing program, and I stayed at his house, and he, we scouted locations together, and we actually went all across Mississippi looking at all different cities. We went to uh, all, all around, near Memphis, and we went, yeah. So, um, so Jackson is where we ended up, and that's where he's based, wow. and it was the perfect, perfect place for us, and he really took care of us. Did you shoot in a real trailer park, or did we you did. have to? Oh wow! We did, yeah. It what was, it was the like? only two. It was the only two trailers next to one another that were vacant in all of Jackson, I think. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, but they really were perfect, and we we painted them a little bit. Yeah, they were perfect. Yeah. We we like touched them up a little bit, but they're they were beautiful. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, now Hanks worked with some of like the best filmmakers out there already. You know, before making your your first feature. You worked with Bennett Miller on Foxcatcher. You worked with Tarsum on Mirror Mirror. Awesome filmmaker. This sells one of my favorites. Yeah. And you worked with another, oh, David O. Russell yes. on The Fighter. Yeah. Um, what did working with, you know, that, that kind of, uh, those kind of auteurs, you know, bring to, to your process? Honestly, it really taught me that there's no one way to make a movie and that and nothing, it really, I mean this in the highest regard, you know, respect for the, all of them because I think they're all amazing, but they all have very different ways of making a movie. And, yeah. And, and uh, it really made me feel comfortable with finding my own way because that's what they do and uh, they really do it well. So, yeah, you know, they each have a completely different style and way of going about it and things that they pay closer attention to and, and, and that sort of thing. So really having the variety was extremely important yeah yeah okay now faith hill <laughs> yeah when i heard that she was going to star in this i mean i think the last thing i, I remember seeing her in was the stepford wives yes this is a very different performance it is. for faith yeah um she's going to be there tomorrow night at the world she premiere is. which is really exciting yeah, yeah. um she's fantastic in this movie yes. like a complete revelation yeah. i did not know she had that grit in yeah. her yeah yeah um tell me about the casting process and how she even came aboard this project and what made you uh, think of her? Honestly, I, you know, I, uh, she's, she's from the area, and she really... Sorry, looks, she played Chris's father, by the way. I mean, mother, yeah. She mother, plays mother. Chris's mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real, yeah, method. Real <laughs> awesome performance. <laughs> no, Faith is, I mean, she's from the area. She's from Star, Mississippi, which is very close. Is that right, Ward? Star, yeah, very close to Jackson, and... Uh, Gosh, she just is Arletta. She is this mother, and she's yeah. from there. And she, a lot of people that were, that worked on the movie knew her. You know, people that we got our like picture cards from, mm -hmm. had worked at McDonald's and were her manager. She was worked at McDonald's. And, oh wow! So she just like she really, really, really is this character. And um, and as soon as I had a conversation with her, it was just like, she's yeah. so wonderful. I mean, she really is like giving and she came to work and she was prepared yeah. and she like w I think wanted to do something different and uh, and I think this is a perfect fit for her and uh, as well as for us you know yeah 
She's a global superstar. I know. This is a small film. I know. Were you nervous to, to work with her, even she, though you know you had such a good initial meeting? She was not at all. Uh, she she just wanted to like come and work, and she just did Total professional. such a fantastic job, and everybody in the crew loved her. And she flew herself there, flew herself back, put herself up. She stayed with us in a forty dollar a night hotel. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. It really was. And Chris, how did you enjoy working with her? You share a lot of scenes with her. I mean, I think, um, I think it, it's like an ode to everyone in the cast, the crew, Hank, the producers. Um, she was an ultimate professional and opinionated, but also it listened. Yeah. And that's kind of how every single day was for us. I think like day eight of shooting, me and Hank were like, is this going to be the day where we like something doesn't work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it never, never really happened. And she was a complete ode to that experience because she walked in, was ready to work, and and was just super lovely. She sang my grandfather happy birthday. Oh, on the phone. The, and, yeah, on the phone. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so yeah. it's just, it was just a lot of a lot of kindness. Yeah. Yeah. You can she's, sense that in her she's performance. She's very sweet, yeah, yeah. And she just, God, she just like, she's so wonderful in the movie. Yeah. She has such access to her emotions. Yeah. You know, it's really impressive. And what you make her dress up in, my I God. I know. I love that <laughs> she just goodness. went for the it. First, the she first went day, for it. The first day she came in and shot, like, we have this, like, cry, we're both crying, like, yeah. she was ready to go. <laughs> Um, so we actually have a clip from the film. I don't think it's really screened at anywhere. No, no. Um, so we're going to show it to you now. Now, Chris, I mean, so much of the film relies upon your chemistry with Riley, and it's pretty electric. It's pretty, it's pretty sexy. Um, do, had you guys known each other prior to making this movie? We knew each other for a really long time. Yeah. She actually had a lot to do with, with me getting the part, with the opportunity of finally leading something. Oh, wow. Um, um, so we've just, oh, it, the, this is the oddest thing to say, but it's like a brother-sister uh, relationship. Oh, wow. <laughs> A very incestual, sexy <laughs> brother-sister relationship. Yeah. Um, what was it like working through that? <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. She's super, super talented and giving an, an, a, a brilliant, brilliant young lady. That it's nothing but up from here, for sure. Mm -hmm. Is this the first time you really got to show off your tattoos on screen? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I was gonna say when I met you, I had no idea they were actually real because I thought. Oh you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you, you got fake ones for the movie. Yeah, uh, they're a topic of conversation a lot. Yeah. At this point in the career. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, we had a, we just didn't ever really even talk about covering one up. Um, it kind of fit him. Oh yeah, totally it fits fit him. him. I mean, it's like the even the shirt in that scene, like the Fox shirt. We were like, eh, Fox might not let us wear this. Let's put it inside out. <laughs> and then it was inside out the entire movie. Oh, wow. It was a lot of that kind of thing. A lot of that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, very improv collaboration. It was yeah. really, really wonderful. Well, with that said, I mean, the tats are yours. They work on the character. How much of yourself is in him? Because I've never seen, like, as, as I've said, I've never seen you like this on screen is this more is this more of who you are yeah i mean i i grew up in a similar environment um and as soon as i read the script i think I, I was in new york i read the script i called my team and i was like i need to meet this guy i need to meet this guy i don't care when or how or what and hank and i met at like some diner in the east village and just chatted forever because he, 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 I don't know what it is about Kermit, but he's just, there's something about him that I just felt like right away, right away from the opening scene. And then seeing the, seeing the, the changes in the script that he made, seeing the evolution of the script and down to the editing of the movie, uh, Hank's, Hank's so okay. He's very, <laughs> I remember re, re, the, cat, the Cadillac was in the first, like the little cold, the cold open at first. And I read it and I was like, oh my God, 
this is a script that reads like a novel. I can't, I, I need to shoot this for yeah, them. Yeah, like, yeah. please hire me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that every character is that way. It's not just Kermit. Like, every single character in this movie, you, you, anyone can relate to, even in the, in the slightest way. Yeah. Except for the owner of the strip bar. That guy's yeah. Kind of, oh, uh, Larry, yeah. <laughs> Brad. Yeah, yeah, Brad He's got Carter. no redeemable qualities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to open it up to the audience. If you have a question, please raise your hand. And uh, we have mics on both sides. Um, Chris, you've done a lot of television. So how, talk about how different this experience <clears throat> was from working in the television environment and where, you know, I mean, I assume with TV you don't get a chance to maybe put as much of yourself into it or able to develop the character. So talk about that. Um, there's just so much more. On, on a movie set, there's so much more freedom. It, I mean, it goes down to Hank and I had so many discussions with, like, let's not be scared of silence. Let's not be scared of silence because we don't, uh, me and RJ could hang out in the hotel room and like not talk for five minutes. That's humanity. That's, <laughs> that's how people don't need to fill space with air. So there's not, that's, it was really wonderful. There's not a whole lot of insignificant moments in this movie. Every moment's pretty, pretty significant. And if it's not, then we're not talking because <laughs> there's no point. Um, um, and on, uh, TV and movies, there's just a lot, there's more, there's more freedom, there's more freedom. Television's changed a lot, there's, you know, the content's different and you, and you, there is a bit more freedom, but you know, you have commercials and, and networks and stuff like that and he was our network, so it was awesome. How you doing, Hank? I'm great, yeah. how are you? Good. Um, how long was production, and what was the budget? It was 18 days. Wow. So, three, uh, I think we did three six-day weeks, something like that. And then, um, it's around $500,000, a pretty small movie, and we got a, an amazing, amazing cast. But honestly, it, was, it, it really freed us up a lot. Like, shooting that short of a period of time, we had an amazing DP who... Every, the whole movie is shot handheld and with very little lights. So when we needed to turn around, we just, he turned around. Like he literally turned <laughs> the camera around. just turned around. I mean, like uh, on bigger movies, you know, it's an hour while everybody moves the lights and they reset up on the tripod and it was like 10 seconds. Literally with Faith one time, I was like, Toby, how long does it take us to turn around? He was like, 10 seconds I'm there <laughs> so yeah I mean honestly like I don't know that I would want to go too big on the next one like I really enjoyed keeping it simple and I feel like it feels honest you know that way it comes across in the movie um, we were talking about the look of the film and I mean you know shot on a low budget but some of so much of the, your approach is pretty experimental. Yeah. It gets, I don't really know what the word to best describe it is. You know, towards the end, I'm not going to give away what happens. Yeah. But the way it's cut together. Yeah. It's, um, it's beautiful. Thank you. But um, it doesn't really kind of follow, you know, a narrative so much as right. it's a little more... Um, esoteric. Really esoteric. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Can you talk about that approach and how you came up? You didn't edit it yourself, did you? I, I mean, I sat with David every day. We edited uh, six days a week and so you know I didn't push the buttons but we certainly worked very very closely together and and um, so it, in a way you know we, we've collaborated very closely and he's an amazing editor but I, I in this exact same way Chris was talking about shooting the movie it just seemed a lot more interesting and it seemed a lot more appropriate and we certainly experimented with a lot of different things um, people's voices not necessarily being connected yeah. to their speaking mouth. And um, yeah, I mean, you're right, it's cut in a, it, it, like Chris said, we're, we're very open to kind of like silences and, um, and order of events is not so important. And then the interviews being thrown in is certainly yeah. a little different. So I, I, I don't know, it just seemed very right. It seemed like the right way to do it. Yeah. It wasn't a plan necessarily, but it certainly is my like, preference style wise I, I think there's a lot of my own private Idaho in there mm -hmm. 
and Gummo, which I love. Yeah. It's an amazing movie. And Badlands. Yeah, I was going to say, some yeah. Terrence Malick and yeah. the way you capture scenery. For sure. You for choose sure. to focus on, you know, things. For sure. Um, we certainly linger. In the distance, yeah. Linger on scenes uh, a little bit and and the focus of the camera. So, yeah, no, it was, it, it, it all just seemed like the right thing to do. It wasn't necessarily a plan. Okay. <laughs> what was that like for, for the actors, for you two? I don't know. I, when I, when I saw, when I saw it, <laughs> and and like you said, like sometimes the voice isn't matching with that. I, I was like, this is, I don't know why this is brilliant. <laughs> so I'm gonna sit down in my bedroom and think about this because it just is. Like you're just like this works. Yeah. And the best thing I could come up with is that you know before you talk, we're thinking in our heads before and you have your voice and you have your little Jiminy Cricket and your vo and it kind of just works that way <laughs> yeah. and the, it's the it's exactly I think in my opinion the way it's cut together with the sound and the and the and the motion picture it's just really interesting yeah yeah I haven't seen the film. Okay. Um, <laughs> Very first surprise. I, uh, I, I've seen that scene twice now. <laughs> <laughs> Once in Chris's hotel room. And RJ I won't saw, watch himself either. So. I, I don't watch, I don't watch <laughs> anything. That If I'm a part of it, I'll watch everything until my part. Oh my God. Um, you missed out on one of the best shows. But, I, yeah. but yeah. literally, like watching the set unfold and watching these guys work on set was really, was really amazing because they really brought like their personality and the character's personality two vastly different things and they really grasped it and um, Riley and Chris the chemistry that they had and when I saw it on uh, like when I wasn't in the scene I was watching on the monitors it looked through the whole thing I can only imagine just yeah. so good and the relationship there was um was, was just fun and and literally there's one scene I'm thinking about which I wonder if Chris remembers which scene it is um, I I think he might know. Um, where you start jumping around. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it just it's so much fun, and when you can have that on a set, and bring that brings to life, and it makes th this type of project makes our job. That's what we love to do. This is what I personally I love to be a part of, because when you have that connection with the characters, when everyone is there working towards the same goal. And that is to give a good product, to have a lot of fun and create a character, but still give a good product. And everyone that I, I was able to meet and be a part of, that's what they were there for and, and to do. Yeah. It was to create something amazing, yet still have an amazing time doing it. And, um, and, and that's, that's, what, that's what I think, that's what I love about my job is having that. And, and a lot of times it's few and far between where you have a project like that. Yeah. And, in eight I, years, <laughs> wow. but this was definitely that project. So. Yeah, yeah, that's great to hear. You cut hair in the movie. Uh, I Chris's cut character hair. Kermit gets out of prison in order to make ends meet. He uh, starts to cut hair. Hey. Did you have to learn how to cut hair? Is that something you've been doing on the side um, for a no, while? No, we had a buddy in, uh, that we met that was tri he would give me a fade. We went to a barber shop like every other week, and and he would fade me up. We'd sit and chill and talk. Yeah. And, um, my great grandmother actually was a barber, and my grandmother cut my hair all growing up. So, and I always usually have short, bald hair anyway. <laughs> so, if you, I've paid in, enough attention to where I could have, but we had we had someone. Okay. We had someone do yeah, it. Chris did. He just did the. Just, he did the beginnings the of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and okay. then, and then. Uh, it was uh, the, 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 the one the whole bit thing. of movie magic. And, and <laughs> 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 it's true. It's funny. Yeah. Um, I was just curious with the dialogue that you had with the locals, how open they were to um, having you interview them, and if you have a funny story or two to share with any of those interviews. Sure, yeah. No, they were extremely open. They, it felt like just a regular conversation with them. We got to know all of them fairly well, and they would hang around the set a lot, and they just had the most amazing stories I've ever heard in my life. Like, unbelievable. And, and, and I have probably 12 hours of that footage. So wow. like, it, You can cut a whole documentary. I know. You can, seriously, if there's some aspiring editor 
I think they could make an amazing <laughs> documentary out of yeah. it. Seriously, it's, it's fantastic. And really, a lot of people that have seen the movie are like, I really want to see more of it. Um, stories, I mean, when you see the movie, like, uh, there, there's too many to even touch on. Oh my on. goodness, well, <laughs> well, one of them plays Riley's mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's she, a funny story. Yeah. yeah, she's not we didn't include her interview, but she we did interview her and her story is amazing, mm. but she's her interview's not included in the movie, but she does play Riley's mom. So we had a, we had a quite a few of them actually that ended up being in the movie just in smaller roles. And she's fantastic. She's amazing. She's amazing. really good. She lived next door to where we shot. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you really under all these people, at least the the few that I met, um I finally understood at 29 years old what Southern hospitality means. <laughs> yeah. They're just kind and friendly and open and, and there's no nonsense. There's no time for nonsense. I think yeah. that's, a, that's a perfect description of the film. There's no time for nonsense yeah. in this kind of world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were, they were so, I don't, even the interviews that are in the movie, they're so sweet, heartfelt, but also funny and sad and I don't know I just felt like it was perfectly depicted what we were trying to yeah. portray well thank you so much thank you an amazing so much. premiere tomorrow night yeah I'm excited. congratulations thank you yeah. nice to meet you